All right, buddy. Oh, are we live? We are live. Oh, we're live. Okay, great. So you want to start the introduction then? Talk about what we're going to talk about? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, this is the ampersand, uh, episode two. Last episode, we kind of just told I'm, people. I'm Caleb, and this is Opie. <laughs> oh, right, right. I'm Cape Judge, and this is Opie. Oh, I got us backwards. Yeah. It's my bad. Anyway, uh, last session, uh, last episode was more about how you shouldn't even open the books until right. you really until have you an have idea, idea of what you want Absolutely. to play. Yes. And then this one, this time, uh, we're going to go over how to create a character mm -hmm. from scratch, That's right. character creation. That's right. Um, I hope you had. What kind of character did you have in mind? Because I didn't even um, really think of a character sure. yet. That um, I wanted to create Chris. Well, uh, what do you think would be fun to play? I use another screen. That's something else. <laughs> That's something else. But uh, I don't know. Like, okay, I've even thought of like a Spider-Man type of character. Okay, let's uh, let's think about Spider-Man. All right. Um, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> and slightly difficult, perhaps. Yeah, a little bit. I think it will be. You think I should do a different one? Maybe? Um, or do we want to show you any, everybody that it can be done? A Spider-Man character. I think Spider-Man's going to be tough. It is going to be tough, because you'd have to modify a lot of the spells. Um, but it can be done. Definitely mm -hmm. can be done. What do you think about, instead of specifically Spider-Man? Right. If we make it a bit more general and just say a superhero character. Okay. Okay. I think so. I think that works. So I think um, with our superhero character, one of the things that I want to do right away is before we even start looking at the classes that he can be, one thing that I want to do, and we'll see if you agree with this, is I want to see if we can change the way we think about how our superhero character works. For example, um, if we want to create a um, sort of a Cyclops character, uh, you know, from the X-Men, right? Yeah. Now, if we want to have a Cyclops character, how about instead of us thinking about, and this is Cyclops character, but we're doing it in Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Now, one thing that I want to do is see if we can stop thinking about his optic blasts as, as something we have to recreate from spells. How strong was the optic blast? I'm guessing that was pretty um, strong. Yeah. That was just the... Sure, sure. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you got to remember, um, we're, we're baby Cyclops right now. But, right, level one Cyclops. Mm -hmm. We it don't necessarily have to create Cyclops. I'm, what I'm getting at is, let's... Let's break away from that, the, the way that our superhero attacks necessarily has to be literal. Right. And that I mean, we can give him ranged abilities, but as far as the game mechanics are concerned, he can be using a bow and arrow. Right. How do you, I see are you so. tracking? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm tracking, I'm um, tracking. Okay, so... We can also look then at a uh, beat em up character. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if we give him uh, a sword, maybe we can explain the, uh, the damage that he does, the slashing damage way. that he does in a different way. Yeah. Maybe it's similar to Psylocke's uh, Psychic Blade. Okay. Um, Psycho Psylocke is another X Men character. She's I remember that one. That's okay. But we'll, we'll go I, with I remember we'll go with it. I remember it. Okay. Um so I feel we still want. I don't need to. Oh. Um so what kind of superhero do we want? Let's go with Cyclops. Um, Let's make it a okay. baby Cyclops. Okay, Cyclops. You kinda had me going for a okay. Cyclops there. Um I kinda didn't want to use like something that we're already familiar with. Okay. Right. Um <clears throat> Or, oh, you know what? Let's let's create 
I have I know exactly what I want to make. All right, let's I know that. exactly what I want to make. I want to make a tinkerer. Uh in a tinkerbell? Sure. In um with little wings. I wish my girl was watching, she'd love that. Yeah. Um not Tinkerbell. Think more Tony Stark. But right. Tony Stark, if he were dropped off in fantasy world. Right. Okay, he so has all of his knowledge. He has all of his knowledge and he has all of his aptitude for building things. All of his, all of his stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. But money doesn't really help him. No, well, <laughs> no, his I money know won't help like, him, but he's got all he's, this. he's crafty enough. He'll, he'll be able to figure something out. Right, okay. right. So, um, next, so now we can think about it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is when, when he levels up or he gets stronger, instead of him getting a new weapon or a new spell or mm -hmm. a new skill, mm -hmm. he's upgrading his suit of armor. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is, this is the character we're going to create today. We're going to create a tinkered Tony Stark character. And every time that he gets stronger, he is making modifications to his suit. So when he's making these modifications, um, if, we, if we decide, if we get together with our group, and our group says, hey, we need a wizard. Mm -hmm. Well, then our Tony Stark Tinker character, okay. he's, wizard. he's equipping shoulder <laughs> cannons onto his armor. Oh, he's man. he's putting wrist rocket, uh, wrist mounted rockets on his armor. Uh, so, okay. how many classes could you dip into for this guy? Well, you don't you don't need you could you know what into, I mean, sure. Um, you could take him okay. any route you really want. Okay, if we want him, if we want our Tinker character to be a rogue. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, his armor is, uh, he developed some sort of special or... boots and yeah, some yeah. sort of camouflage yeah. thing yeah, some kind of on his camo. armor. Yeah. Um, if we want him to be a fighter type character, um, then he reinforces all the joints and puts armor plating on his suit. Um... If we want him to be a paladin, he does the same thing, but to get the to recreate the paladin spells in this suit of armor, uh, he uses tinkered items. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we we get together with our group, and we say, "Hey guys, uh, we have this idea for uh, a character that we want to play. We already have it have." His background set up. Mm -hmm. We know what he's about. We we even and we're gonna model this very heavily after Tony Stark. Yes. Okay. Yes. So he's an alcoholic. High charisma. High charisma. Yeah. <laughs> you can do him high charisma. Yeah. Um. Very intelligent. Yeah. I but so. but here's the thing. Now watch this. So our highly intelligent, um, very charismatic hero that we built may not necessarily be very strong. Okay. Right. So if we if we take this character and we put him in a suit of armor, he doesn't need it's not gonna help, right? But basically what we want to think about is when we're statting out this character, mm -hmm. we want to make the stats such that they reflect him in the armor. Not him outside the armor. The armor yeah. is what he built. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that would kind of just be always happening, mm -hmm. right? You're just, sure. You'd always be in a suit. Right. Unless you specifically say, I'm climbing out of my suit. And, and then he can do that. Y'all would have to figure out sure. a way of just taking out look and see all the armor doing. and weapons. And just be like, okay, well, you don't have any of this right now. Bing! No armor, no weapons. Something like that. Um, climbing out of your suit. I'm gonna send these guys your. They don't even have it. I don't know if they do. Twitch.tv. No. Twitch.tv slash slash C A B E G J U B J G E. He'll spell it. Right, but it's 
Not your real life name. I think this is. Here. It is a rough name. I said real life. Is that too big? It's perfect. I hope they can read it. Oh, well, I know they can. Okay, so. Wow. Um, now that we have our our idea for our superhero. Okay, sure. Uh, now that we have the idea for our superhero, uh, we've come up with it. Mm -hmm. The next thing we want to do is start building it. So we talk to our group, and our group says, hey, uh, this is what we need for the party. What, is, what does our party need? Right, that's what happened to me. Yeah. They didn't have a tank, so we, I'm like, okay, so let's, I'll be the paladin. So let's play it. We're going to be the tank. We're going to be the paladin. All right, we're we'll, gonna okay. be, we'll be the Paladin, Iron Man. Iron Man, Paladin. Here we go. All right. So um, to replicate the uh, the strength of the suit, um, in other words, the armor and toughness and whatnot of the suit, um, that'll I think that'll be reflected very well uh, in the character's armor class. Yes. Okay. So since our character is going to have good armor class, that will represent our character actually being inside of a suit of armor, which, which I think is great. Yeah, that makes think, sense. Yeah. Um, now every time we level up, <clears throat> we we get stronger. Mm -hmm. Our Tony Stark character is making modifications to his. Yes, making modifications. So if you get like a special feat or whatever, you could always. Mm -hmm. Modify yeah. that feet. Um, if we find an item, same thing. Which people are going to have to just read over all the feats. There's so many sure. things. Anyway, there's, there's, there's lots of stuff in D and D. Um, so let's let's keep it pretty basic. We'll we'll yeah. we'll leave ourselves. We'll let ourselves be a human for the purposes of this uh, right. character creation. Definitely. So what we're going to do is we are going to follow along with the 5th uh, edition book and uh, yeah, he's follow got the... along with the character creation from the book. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and switch to that. You won't see our faces. We'll be back later. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch to this. So you can see this thing. And somehow it got larger than I wanted it to be. It's okay. All right, so the first thing we do is choose a race. Now, there's a lot of races that I think we could get to represent our um, our human character or our, our human inside of a suit uh, character that we're making. Um, let's think about this. Um, how big is the suit? When when we jump inside the suit, is it bigger than a human? Man, I don't even know. So, the suit that we created. No, it's a, we gotta make it a fantasy name. Oh, sorry, so sorry. Make him. We'll call him uh, Theodore. This is just so people know. That's fine. We'll call him Theodore. Iron Man. Fine. Oh my God! Really? Are we doing this over the we're name? Do, we're doing it. Theodore. Do they even spell it right? No. There's a there you go. Um Starkinson. Starkinson. There we go. Oh, that man. sounds more fantasy, right? Class. Okay, class. He is going to be a paladin. Yeah. Um you know what? Let's do this. Because we're not actually playing paladin, are we? We're we are. Superhero. Um before we write paladin here, let's erase <laughs> that. What do you want? Mech. Ooh. And now inside, let's put next to it, we'll put it in brackets, Paladin. Put it inside brackets so that we know that mech is, this is what he really is. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is what the book says to do. Background. We already know. Background. Superhero. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, superhero. That's right. Whatever. Player name. Oops. Oh, your name. Oh, that's Cabe. You. Yeah, Cabe Jack. Yeah, that's you. Okay, race human. 
So we are oh, going to be human. Good. Now, now let's let's pause for a second and talk about the race. It's Tony Stark. Yes, I understand this, but we are representing him in the Mac. Yes. He's still a good guy. You're right. We're doing alignment right now. Uh, I'm just talking about the race, though. Do now, you want to go over all the races real well, quick? Uh, the only reason that I mention race at all <clears throat> is because is if we make... Nah. Anyway. She's just exploring. Um, if we make our Tony Stark character, um, he's lost. If we make him a half orc, we can make him bigger than what humans are, and that would represent how big he is inside of the suit. It's just you're saying how tall he is. Yeah, because the suit is going to be bigger than the actual person. Still, that's not okay. This, then that's fine. He's just okay. a human. We'll, we'll keep going with it. Yeah. Okay. It's so, going to take us a little bit to get through. So, all this. Uh, step one, it says choose a race. So we've we've chosen human as our race. Now, what we do is he unlawful? Well, you wouldn't call it unlawful because he does some stuff that's not that's exactly. Not, that's not online. Also, oh, neutral awful is not. How about neutral? Neutral is. It was? Man, see, I'm new too. You are new. And that's why we're doing this. So yeah, okay. I'm learning too. Yeah. Um, so, the first thing we did is we chose that we are going to be a human. That's all right. We'll figure this out in a minute. So, now we're a human. So, now what we do. Oh, yeah, we go into the book. Now, alternatively, <clears throat> if somebody does not have access to the books, you always have the option to go on the internet and search for the SRD. And that's the source uh, system resource document. Okay. Now, with the system resource document, it'll give you all the tools that you need to create a character. Can you put a link in the uh, chat, maybe? Possibly. I, I will do that. We'll do that. All right. Now, we are creating a human character. So what we want to do is either from the book that you purchased from the store, legally, or uh, from the system resource document, you're going to find the section where it talks about the races. Class features. Uh, we want to talk about races. Or race first. features, yeah. sorry. Race features. race features. So you want to find the section uh, that talks about humans first. If you're building a human. Yes, if you're building a human. Otherwise, you pick whatever yeah. is more appropriate. Okay, so I find human. Yeah. I'm going through my book right now. Maybe take it forever. All right, well, if you would calm down. Man, I'll just quit. Um, because I don't have a mouse right now. You gonna borrow mine? Mm, no, you need your mouse. I'm gonna go steal your mouse from your other It's computer. too late. It's too late. We've already gone too far. I might just go grab it. Uh, it's probably in the back. It's kind of a hassle to get to. I guess humans are gonna be the first one. Right? Probably before T's. Yeah, but I would think that it would happen before oh, half there's... work. All right. After half work, we're before You're half right. elf. Oh, half maybe. Uh, okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. No. No. Dragonborn. You don't want to hold it. No, I don't want a dragonborn. Where are the hum humans? Yay! Okay. Okay. So, um, there's a couple different uh, types of human. Uh, some humans get uh, different bonuses and things. So, the the base human gets an ability score increase. So, um, there's actually a spot. What do you have your dice? Uh, we'll we'll roll up some uh, deals using uh, the small line deals. Okay. Um, now, there's actually a spot on the sheet where we can put the. Uh, all our feats and things, all our traits and feats. Oh man, mm -hmm. I think it's right. Oh, but oh, went too far. Too far. Okay, so this that's one? for proficiencies and languages. Features and there features. we go. Features and traits. That's what we're putting in right now. So our first trait is an ability score increase, and you can shorthand this as much as you like. Um, basically, your ability scores each increase by one. So all of our oh. ability. That's not our ability scores. That's our same. These? Nope. Oh my god, really? The ability scores are the strength, dex, con, and whiz, charisma. Yeah, that's how we hear. That's saving for Well, that's yeah. your main note. So, yeah. so see, we need to roll these real quick. We'll do that, but we're doing it in the order the book says. Okay. Okay. 
Um, humans, um, other than the ability score increase, they don't really get a whole heck of a lot. Uh, unless you go variant human. Variant humans get a, um, a plus one to two different ability scores instead of all of them. But I think, you know, I feel like... Two uh, or something? That's nah, kind of different than that. But I feel like our, our Tony Stark character would have just added one to everything. Okay. I think that's going to fit the best. All right. Okay. So now we now we uh, know that when we're done getting our ability scores, we're just going to increase them all by one. Okay. In addition to... Yeah, let's go ahead and roll some. Uh, well, we don't need to do that just yet. Not just yet. Really? Really. I want to roll some dice. I know you do. That's, that's your first part. Dice. That is your favorite part, rolling dice. Even when you don't need to, you roll dice anyway. Sometimes. You do. All right. Perhaps, um, perhaps a bit much. Yeah. Now, uh, we also get things like uh, languages. Do we really need languages? We do. We're creating do we the whole character. Right? We want to make the whole character, don't we? I might not know. So y'all can see us for a little bit. All right. Um, so, um, languages. You can speak, read, and write common. So, okay, so I need to write all that down. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to put that back up or are you just going to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So, so it's down here. Mm -hmm. Speak, read. Oh, you can just write human. Uh, this is going oh. to be in the language box. So this is... Son of a gun. I know. This thing's... It's kind of complicated. That's why... So you want to you find the box that says... No, you've gone too far now. You saw it already? Additional features and traits? Mm -hmm. Or is it in language? Uh-huh. I don't see anything. Says, oh, other proficiencies in language. There there you go. Boom. You got it, buddy. A human. Uh... Uh... The traits or skills? Well, this would be in the traits box. Now, what the only thing we're really concerned about in our languages box is languages. So we can speak common. We can just say common. Because this thing's going to get pretty full pretty fast. So yeah. We want to save room when we can. Okay. Um, aside from that, we get to speak one extra language. Of your choice? <clears throat> of their choice. Okay. Um, now, I think that a good idea would be, since our Tony Stark character needs things made, that he will get tinkered items from dwarves. We, we deal a lot with dwarves. So we're going to speak dwarvish along with... Uh, dwarvish. Yes. So we'll speak dwarvish along with our... Hopefully I spelled right. Uh, who cares? Um, <laughs> so we have better. our speed now, also. We have what? We, we know our speed. So let's go up to the, the oh. box where it says Oh, does it speed. tell you that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, speed is determined by your race. Race, okay. Mm -hmm. So we can go back up here. Yep. And 30, We probably. can move 30 feet. Yep, okay. And, oh, wait. I'd like to... Sh well, anyway, on a grid sheet, mm -hmm. it, yeah. which is what we use... Actually, do you have it? No. No. Um, Darn it, but they, they have everything. Um, here's the thing, too, though. Anyway. Is yeah. Yes, we... When our group uses grids, however... Um, the 5th edition is written as such that you can actually um, use theater of the mind when you're playing the game. So okay. the dungeon master, the storyteller, can tell the group, hey, you know, this monster is 100 feet away from you. Right. Now, since you know that, and you know your speed, you know that it would take you 30 feet plus 30 feet plus 30 feet plus 10 feet to get to them. Unless you use... Unless you have something that you can... Or you can double. Remember, you can dash. Mm -hmm. Dash is still only double movement, though. So right. But it uses your whole action to do the dash. Do that. Okay. Which would go 60 instead yeah. of 30. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. Which I didn't use for a long time, because I didn't realize how yeah. it worked. Well, there's a lot of little bit of rules. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds yeah. of stuff you can edit. Um, or can do. Okay. Uh, we also know our size. Yeah, do we decide, like, six um, foot... I think that's just you your own. Because, yeah. yeah, you just decide. But that. we are a medium-sized character. Medium and that part sized. of it is important. Does that go in here? Um, there should. I guess there's not a box for size. That's fine. I don't I think, think there, there is. used to be. 
It's fine. Yeah, it's not it super, it's not super that, important. It's more like a background thing. All right. So now Doesn't we have matter. our race. That kind of actually kind of does matter because the half halflings are like super small. Thing. Halflings are. Small, I'll just put I'll put medium down here. Okay. We'll just put size medium or medium size. Next, we are choosing a class. Oh, I forgot to show you. So we already know the class that we're that we pick. Medium size. We are a paladin, right? So what we're gonna do is either in the the system resource document or in your book, you're going to go to the section describing classes, and then you're going to pull up your class that you're that you want to be. <clears throat> And your class is going to determine what skills you get, uh, what proficiencies you start the game with. Um, it will uh, determine what skills and proficiencies you get when you level up. Also, uh, your class will determine whether or not you, you get spells. Spells are super fun. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see. So we want to go to the Paladin now. Yes. There he Here is. we go. Okay. Here so, we go. first level. First level paladin. Plus two proficiency. Oh, hang on. Folks, go back up. I know what I'm doing here, buddy. He knows what he's doing. Okay. Now, uh, paladins, uh, from the start to the end. As a paladin, you gain the following class features. All right. Let's get back up. Let's get back on. There's going to be a lot of stuff getting put on this page now, buddy. Let me tell All you. All right. Let's do it. All right, first we need to find the box that says hit dice. All right, right in here. Boom. Okay. Uh, level one paladin mm. has 1d10 hit dice. Times how many? Times level? No, 1d10. Yeah, but that's what type they are. I mean, it's times right. level. Right, well, the Which is one level one. is the, the part that right now is one. Right. Now when we level up, it'll be 2d10. If we level up then again, if our character lives to level 3, it'll be 3d10. That's just how I like doing it because it makes it easier for me to remember it. Um, our proficiencies. So now we got to find the box where it says proficiencies. Okay. Proficiency on the bonus. Oh, the actual proficiencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, we are proficient in armor, all armor, and shields. All armor? Mm-hmm. And shields. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, our weapon proficiencies, uh, simple weapons and martial weapons. And this is straight from the... This is straight from the book or the yeah. system resource document. Simple weapons and what kind of weapons? Marshall. Marshall. Can we do a quick explanation of those? Because I um, actually don't know. Okay. So uh, here, once we start adding equipment, uh, we're going to go to a part where it's going to tell us what weapons we have the option so to So let's get. just keep going then. So let's just keep going. All right. But know that... Martial weapons are things like um, things that you would have to be trained to use. Uh, okay. Swords. Are a specific good type of swords or just like swords. long swords? Swords. Really? Um, if you give somebody who's never held a sword before, they can swing it around, but they're not going to be great with it. Yeah, and they're going to be proficient. They won't get the proficiency bonus from it. Okay. Okay. Um, Makes sense. A stick, though, you can hand anybody a stick or a staff, and they can swing it around and hit somebody and probably hurt them. Right. Okay. So a stick is a simple weapon. Makes sense. Sort of. How about like a club? Uh, simple. Simple? Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Simple and martial. That's right. So I should put all. Um, or no. Well. No, that's fine. We don't have proficiency in exotic weapons, though, which is why we don't put all. We won't even get into Okay, that. now uh, our saving exactly. throws. Saving So let's, let's find the box it. with saving yeah. throws. Now, 
uh, we get proficiency with some of our saving throws. And we are going to denote proficiency by clicking the box that is next to... That's right, just like that. Um, our paladin gets proficiencies or uh, is proficient with uh, his wisdom and charisma mm -hmm. saving throws. Wisdom and charisma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so our Tony Stark character here, he's very wise to be able to build this thing, and he's Tony Stark, so he's good at building stuff. Right? Yes, yes. So that's that's where these things come in. Um, oh, now sure. we get to choose the skills that we're proficient over in. Here. Mm -hmm. That's right. They show proficiency. Correct. Um, now we get to choose skills that we're proficient in. We get to choose from athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Now, just off the top of my head, I think so that we stay in theme of our character, I think persuasion Definitely persuasion. Yes. This dude is awesome. He's really good at persuading people. All right. So, so the same way that we check a box for our saving throws, we're going to do the same for skills. How many do you get? Three? Well, we get to choose from two. So we picked one now. Uh, and then we have the option of athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, and religion left. Definitely not religion. <clears throat> okay. I don't think, right? I don't think so. No. Um... Now, um, no, Tony Stark is atheist. Pretty sure he is. Yeah, he is. He said so several times, even though he hangs out with Thor, who is the god of thunder. I know. I figure that. <laughs> right. um, now, uh, maybe we built the suit really well in such a way that if we need to jump over a ravine <clears throat> or if we need to lift something up, we have hydraulics built into our suit. So maybe we have proficiency in athletics. Athletics. I think that still, to me, it stays on theme with our... But it's strength now. That's okay. It is okay? It's okay. Because our suit is where we get our strength from. I wonder if you could do deception as well. Um, or we intimidation? Don't. We, can, we can get points in intimidation if you like. Um, we can explain the points in intimidation that he built the suit in such a way that it has a scary face on it. Ooh, how about it looks spooky? How about just performance? Uh, performance isn't one of the of our options uh, during. Oh the right, what were they again? Uh, so we've already chosen persuasion. Uh huh. Now our other options that we have are athletics and athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, or religion. Either insight or intimidation. Okay. I'm wondering, what do y'all think? Um, so, maybe we built a very scary suit. So let's go. Let's go intimidation. intimidation. Our, yeah, our suit is scary. So we'll have to take away athletics. We could do three. We can do three. Oh, we can't do three because the book says so no. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. I'm used to having three. For I know. I know. We'll, we'll get another one when we do our background. Okay. I see. Um, now. Now it's pretty fun. Now we get to start adding skills that we get. Okay, okay. so uh, one of the first features, so we got to find the box that we're uh, on our character sheet where it talks about features. Features uh, and traits. Okay, features and traits. Our first feature that we get for our paladin is divine sense. Now, <clears throat> DI, BI. Mm. Yeah. Um, now here's the deal about this. Uh, I'm going to read this thing, and we have the name of the skill. And we have the Divine Sense skill. Okay. But we're not building a Paladin. We're just using the Paladin's class to build this character. Right. So after we read what the skill says, we have to translate that skill into doing what our character does. Right. right. Okay, so let's read it. Uh, divine sense: the presence of a strong evil, uh, hmm. the presence of strong evil registers on your senses like a noxious odor, and powerful good rings like heavenly music in your ears. As an action, you can open your awareness to detect such forces. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet of you that is not being. Uh, that is not behind total cover. You know the type um, 
of any being whose presence you sense, but not its identity. So by saying not right. its identity, you won't be able to instantly know who that person is. But you'll know what type. You'll know what type of being person it is. is. Yes. Okay, so um, we actually need to write down at least the number part on that. Okay, so... Um, Within 60 feet. Uh, well, that is... And not behind cover. Mm -hmm. um, let's start the, the description of this off as action. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is actually where I went wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where I went wrong. Mm -hmm. I sh when I was writing out all of my stuff on my character sheet, I didn't put that it was an action or a bonus action mm -hmm. or a reaction. And that part, it's very important. And you don't want to have to go back and, and do it later. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, okay. let's, let's shorthand this. All right. Okay. Now, when it's... Because this is our character sheet, and so basically it's it's just us that needs to be able to uh, so read what this says. So we're going to shorthand this. We're going to say action, uh, and then what we're doing is since, um, since evil, right? since uh, good or evil, uh, let's say detect, detect good or evil, good slash evil. Um, and then instead of writing out within, let's just do W slash. Good or evil, 60 feet. W slash in. Okay. Oh, is that how that works? Mm -hmm. um, you can use this feature. Uh, oh, here's another part of the spell that we do. Uh, here's another part of the spell that we almost did not put in, and we definitely need to. Um, you can also detect the presence of any place or object uh, that has been consecrated or desecrated. Okay, so detect good or evil, uh, and then instead of adding that to the end, let's just tack on after good and evil. Um, add another note that says, um, we'll say consecrated or desecrated. C O N S E created slash right. desecrated. Same. Uh huh. There you okay. go. Um, now we get to use this a number of times per day, equal to uh, one plus our charisma modifier. I did not know that. I need to write that down. Yes, you do. So uh, let's put in quotes. <clears throat> Uh, one plus one plus charisma slash day d a y in quotes. That's pretty concise. So we know okay. how many times per day we can use it. We know. Um, what action it is, and we know what it does, which is perfect. Um, the next thing we get, and I know this is something that you love using, lay on hands. Now, here's the thing, is we are not actually a paladin right now, right? We're Tony Stark. Okay. So we don't have a divine sense. We have a radar. Okay. So let's put, before divine sense, Let's call this our our radar. So that's what we oh so we're changing divine sense and then I'll do this. Now yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so what happens is that's we a good idea. we use our suit and our suit detects these forces that are in this area. Okay. And our our, our suit will let us know if this good or evil is around. All right. All right. Okay. So now we have now we have an explanation of how we're able to find these things. All right. Okay. Um, so next is your favorite lay on hands. I know you love you love you some lay on hands, don't you? Yes. Yes, you yes. do. Yeah, I like okay. healing myself. And that's others. what the, that's what lay on hand does. It, le it lets us heal. Now before we we should make his like a beam. Do you want a beam? A beam of healing that goes like a nanobot beam. Ah, uh, but it can't. You have to be touching it. Okay. You so how about 
What if yeah, we have like that nanobots work. in our suit that we walk over and repair people? Yeah, I think that's a good way to do okay. it. Okay. Nanobots. Nanobots. And of course, discuss all this with your DM and group so they understand your ideas and character That's right. creation. That's right. And they should be open with it. If they're not open with it, hey, try to make them open with it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> try to convince them that this is the okay, way DMD is so supposed to be. We'll get a description. We'll read what the spell, what the lay on hands does, and then after we read it, then we can yeah. shorthand it how we need to. Okay. Right. Your blessed touch can heal wounds. Our nanobots can heal wounds. All right. Uh, you have a pool of healing power that replenishes when you take a long rest. So you have only a certain number of nanobots that you can use okay. uh, until you have to either uh, power them back up with your internal batteries or uh, charge them from the sun or some other power source that you have. Still an action, right? Um, it is an action, but we haven't read that part of it yet. Okay. Uh, with your pool, you can restore a number of hit points equal to your paladin level times five. As an action, you touch a creature and draw power from the pool to restore a number of hit points to that creature up to the maximum amount of remaining in your pool. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, it is an action, uh, and a, our pool, well, it doesn't go by once per day. We go. We have a pool, so our, well, pool, yes, uh, our pool equals our you, paladin you, level you, times five. How do you tap into long rest part? Like how would you include that? Uh, in the, uh, that it refreshes during long rest. Right, refresh um, so what we'll do is this. Um, we will say, put in quotes here, yeah. uh, LVL, LVL times five. Oh, the pool. Uh huh. But you don't have to write that. This is our shorthand. We got it. There, there's a lot of stuff going in this box. So LVO times five. Okay, let's do that. Level times Slash five. Slash day. Okay. This is how many points we get per day. Okay, that makes sense. Uh -huh. I like that. Um, and then when we use this, um, we can. Use uh, we can use those points to heal that much. So at level one, it's just five points, right? That's it. It's not a lot. So five out of five. You can do that that way if you want. Or it, right now is when you can put the description of it. Okay, yeah, let's just. Do um, that. How would someone keep? Uh, you just say use points to heal. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, lay a kitty. Five HP. Um, Isn't that how it works? You can just say use pull to heal. That's plain okay. enough. Um, slash, here's another thing too. Um, if you spend five hit points from your pool, you can cure a target of disease or poison. Are you thinking how you shorthand? Yeah, if you so spend five points, we don't need to. Heal. Um, instead of saying if you if you spin, remove. Okay, five points. Five points. Five points removes poison slash disease. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Lay on hands is pretty awesome. Yeah, lay on hands is pretty cool. Yeah. I kind of want to. Oh well. Okay. Wish I had a little more room. Um, the next thing we get is a fighting style. So here's what we got so far. Guys. This is what we got so far. Looks pretty good. Still going. Still going. Um, but we still have plenty more to go. Now, uh, next we get a fighting style. Okay. Uh, fighting style is how. Our, our Tony Stark character moves around, what he does when he moves. We have the option of being defensive, a dueling, great weapon fighting, or protection Tony Stark. Mm. 
Well, now we said tanky. Game, in the game that we play together, your uh, protection style. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that lets you do is you can, um, you can disrupt somebody's attack when they're trying to hurt one of your teammates. Okay. Um, I think we can. I think we can make that work <clears throat> with our Tony Stark Tinker fantasy character. So right. let's go protection. I was thinking protection too. We said okay. tank. Yeah. All right. So I just call so it protection. So we can just call it protection. Okay. What protection does is when a creature you can see attacks a target other than you that is within five feet. You can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the roll. You must be wearing a shield. Um, so we're going to shorthand this. We're going to say creature attack, uh, creature w slash n five feet. And uh, same. I mean, you don't. Uh, that's not part of the. Oh yeah, you do have to see him. Well, we know. We know. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, Creature within five feet attacks target other than you. Oh yeah, if if creature. Attacks a attacks target other than me. Um you can Give use your advantage. Oh reaction. reaction. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put because I'm going to make it reaction up there, like this, reaction. If creature within, target other than you, give, uh, what's it called? Give a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Now is it on the whole roll or whatever? Uh, on that attack, yes. On that attack roll. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. What else? All right. So, so far that stuff is pretty cool, right? We like the stuff that we have. Mm -hmm. um, we get spellcasting in level two, so we don't have to worry about that right now, but spellcasting is pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, we like spellcasting. Now, the way that we're going to explain the spellcasting is once we start getting spells, our Tony Stark character has developed his suit of armor in such a way that this could be cool. he's put gadgets and stuff yeah. on his suit. Pow, 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 pow. Okay. Um, we could even make the weapons that he gets, like even obtains. Mm -hmm. He can like. You could. I I can think of two ways you could do it. He could either attach it physically to his thing, mm -hmm. and you could just say it takes a little bit of time. I don't know, an hour or two. Sure. Or he could be like, "That's a great idea," and then he goes back to his shop or whatever. So he sees a spell and replicates yeah, it. Yeah, he science. sees it. Yeah, he sees something. He's like, oh, that's cool. And he uses science yeah, to replicate Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I like that idea. That's super cool. Right. And and that explains why he wouldn't just have all the spells in his suit start right. right. Yeah, right. okay. I like that idea a lot. Okay, so now we have all of our uh, level one class features. We have our... Uh, we have our race picked out. Uh, now we're going to go to the next part of the book that says what the next step in character creation is. Uh, next part of the book, or if you're using the SRD, the next step that you would do after this. Okay. So, we have our race chosen. We have our class chosen. Um, next, we need to roll some dice. I know that you are excited about this part. Rolling dice. Yes, sir. You love to roll some dice. Ready indeed. Okay. Now, paladins, you've played paladin enough. You know what stats are important. Yes. All of them. <laughs> I got some good rolls. Yes, you did. You got, you got great rolls. I kept rolling. Uh, but uh, in playing a paladin, you you need all of it. Let's show every, the dice. Every single stat. You, you need them all. Okay. Are we going to show off the dice? Yeah, we're going to show off the dice. What a great sound. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, now, there are different ways that you can get your stats. You can roll dice, or you can, um, you can use point by, or you can use the uh, stat arrays. Today, we're going to use a special method uh, of rolling stats. This is what I always do when I roll stats. We're going to oh, roll 46. 46. Now, what we're doing here is we're getting the numbers that we're going to fill in for our strength, dexterity, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. Mm -hmm. um, they are all arranged from 1 to 18. And so to represent that with the dice, we roll uh, four d6, four dice, six, four six-sided die, and we're going to drop the lowest dice out of each roll. That's a good way to get a decent roll, I yeah. think. I remember doing this with mm -hmm. you, too. And you don't have to do it this way. No. Sometimes you can roll a d20, Every right? DM, Every DM has... That, that is another option that I gave for you. Right. I said, but you can roll crazy. a d20. That's crazy. The average of a d20 <laughs> is the same as the average of... Uh, you know, one through twenty. It's a right. it's eleven, which is an average roll. Yeah, that's a bad roll. But if you roll a d twenty, you have the chance you, you have like twos and threes. You can get twos and well, you can get threes if you roll three d six. Right, it's the lowest you can get. But you have a better chance of getting better stats. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but if points. you use a d twenty, you also have a chance of getting a twenty in your ability scores, which is fun. Because right. if you end up with a 20 in Charisma as a Paladin at level 1, yeah, you're, pretty stacked. you're pretty stacked. I mean, I'm only 18 on um, my So I, I am on a, on a separate place. I'm pulling up a note so we can keep track of our scores oh. to fill in later. Yeah, and I'm going to show you where we're at. We're just kind of doing these over here. These are what I'm rolling for, in order. And you have to do them in order. That way you can't just... Oh, wait. For character creation, you can choose, right? For the two houses. Choose. Yeah, okay. Um, now, there there is a way that some DMs play <clears throat> that you roll your stats in order. <clears throat> right. Um, typically, when you do that, you'll roll your stats first, and then you choose, choose the class. Really? Yes. That kind of makes sense. It's kind of fun doing it that way. That's kind of bad. Because you can't go in, the way we're doing Well, you can't go into a game knowing what class you're going to play until you roll your stats. It's a pretty old school way to do it. I can see that. And it's though. okay to do. Yeah. But that's not what okay. we're trying to do. No, that's not what we're doing. Today. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> what's our first roll? All right, here we go. Okay, so 11. we get to drop a one. Yeah. Uh, and 11. Okay, 11 is our first score. All right, so Let's we're doing it again. All right. I'm not filling it in yet. He's keeping tabs on a, keeping on a notepad over here. Okay. That's wow, a ten? Ten. Now, keep in mind though, keep in mind these are average scores. These are eleven and ten. ten is okay. Okay, and drop it. What is this? Eleven twelve? Twelve. Twelve is alright. Come on, big ten, eleven, twelve. Now no here's the thing. ten, eleven, twelve is pretty average. That's okay. Yeah. Now we we really want a fifteen, sixteen above. Woo! There we go. All right. Okay, we got a so fifteen. We got a fifteen, now. and that's on Constitution. Great. That determines well, your health. Is it? it oh, could right, be right, for right. That's right. Never mind. It could be at the point. Yeah. Mm, Boy, wow. another ten. Boy, you love rolling ten, don't you? I don't like this. I don't like this, but we're gonna use whatever I get. We are. Thirteen. And okay. One more uh, that is six. Now another thing that I do. Every time I have, because since I'm the DM, I get to make up the roll rules. You have to do I have all my up. players roll um, one extra one more place. Seven, and then you can drop the lowest of all of your Yeah, I'm just such a kind guy. I do okay. Okay. Oh, nice. So it's mm, another ten. No, so we're going to drop, gonna drop one of our tens. We're just going to drop one Okay. So uh, <laughs> starting with our highest number is a 15. Rolls. 15. So, so we're the tank. We are the tank. I think we... We have to go Constitution. Okay, now, for our, for our Tony Stark character, our Tinker character, the Constitution score, in a normal character, your Constitution represents your toughness, your grit, yeah. how, how long you can survive in a fight and then in, Hit points. in battles throughout the day. It's a number that represents those two things. Okay. 
For right. our Tony Stark character, it's going to represent how tough our suit is. Yeah, how tough our armor is. How tough our, our suit. Yeah, the suit. How much damage it can take throughout the course of the day. Right, right. So, uh, if we want him to have uh, a really strong suit of armor, then we're going to put our Constitution score as the our biggest score. And in this case, he is a tank. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just okay. go ahead and do that. So we're going to drop a 15 into our Constitution. Right, so let's switch back over. Okay. All right, 15. All right, what was our other number? Our next highest is our a next 13. Our next highest is a 13, yes. And then a 12. Or wait, yeah, 13. Okay, so 13, what would I want to drop it in? Uh, well, our next highest uh, thing that we need for um, spell casting is our wisdom model. Or, I'm sorry, our charisma. Yeah, charisma. So we need a pretty decent charisma score. So yeah, we're going to put... I agree. You have to for this guy. Because his a lot of his uh, like damage and everything is based mm -hmm. off charisma. Right. So yeah, you definitely want to... Now we know that because... We just know. So how would they have known that? They'd have to look at some of his actual spells that he gets. Um, well, it says in the character creation part under um, the Paladin that his wisdom determines the spell casting. Modifier. It actually. Oh, it, it oh does yeah. Where does this? Or uh, where does? Where is this? Oh, uh, well, you don't modifier? get spell casting until level two, so we don't have to worry about it. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Um, now, um, our twelve. Our twelve is our next highest. Now. You know from playing your paladin that you want to hit things. Yeah. And hitting things is based on your strength score. Right. So let's drop our strength. Let's drop that 12 in our strength. Wisdom determines some of the stuff, right? So now we have, now we have an 11, an 11 and two tens. And two tens. Okay. So probably... Eleven in intelligence because we know he's freaking smart. Okay. Or should we switch strength and intelligence? Um, no, I like strength there. Okay. Because uh, remember, the strength is our our suit of armor. Okay. All right. Now the okay. Mods. Now we're a human, so now we get to bump each one of those scores up by one. Oh yeah. Thirteen. Eleven. Don't forget this. One of our one of our party members forgot to do this. Until like level eight or nine. Level eight or nine. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh yeah, I'm human. I was supposed to get, you know, oh shit. All right, now, uh, now, for now that we have our stats, now we can find out how many hit points we're supposed to have. Well, let's go ahead and do the mods below them. Okay. Since we're yeah. here. Um, do you remember how those work? I think. Okay, okay so. So you tell me what you think. Okay. 12. And I'll tell you if you're wrong. So if you have a 12, it gives you plus one. That's true. Okay, if you have How about 14, yes. it gives you plus two. Yes. So 13 is still a one. That's correct. Okay, so this one is a plus one. Do you actually type in plus one? No, you can just put one. Um, now, I think I'm going to do that here's, just so they know. Here's a little note that I want to, a little suggestion for you. When you're actually playing, you're going to use the modifiers more than you will the raw number. Do you True. agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, let me ask you, how do you feel about swapping the placement of those two? So you put the 13 in the small box, and then the plus one in the big box. I don't know. What do you think? Well, were I a player, that's what I would do. I don't know if I should confuse them right now. Um, we're in character creation. It's okay. Character creation is confusing for a lot of people, so it's A-OK. -okay. Let's just do this for now. Okay. I think. I think. Sure. I mean, perhaps. I'll tell you what, when we... So, Opie already has an idea. Mm -hmm. of uh, we are going to be creating a character sheet from the ground up. And it's going to be... Um, are we using any more dice? No, we don't need any more dice. I didn't think so. Now, the character cr uh, sheet that we're going to create mm -hmm. from the ground up is based on the idea of a heads-up display, just like when you play a video game. Right. When you play a video game, you have a heads-up display. And in that heads-up display, it gives you all the information that you need at a very quick glance. It's something that you 
look at it and you have everything you need right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. We're going to create a character sheet that gives you all the information you need based on your this character sheet and it's something that you'll be able to access at a glance. Yeah. And it will have the things that you need right there for you. I mean, this, this is, there's a lot to try to, to dig through. This kind of does it for you, but it's, it it's, does. It's there's not a, a lot quick glance. There, there's a lot that you don't need. Right. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to, um, what do we want to do next? We can get our hit points. Uh, do you want to get our hit points? Sure. Okay. Hit points. Oh, we do need dice. Uh, we don't need dice at level one. No? We don't. We can roll or choose the average, right? Um, hit points at level one is determined in a very specific way oh, based on your class. Okay. All right. Um, at level one, your hit points equal 10 plus your constitution modifier. Okay. And our con is plus three. So our so level one hit points... 13. There Oops. you go. All right, hit points. 13. All right. Perfect. Um, what do you want to do next? Uh, let's do, let's get some equipment. we got to put these in here, don't we? Uh, we'll get to those in a second. I think I did these wrong. Is it wisdom and charisma? That's right. For a ballot. Yeah, that's right. We'll get to those All in right, a second. Let's go back over there. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's buy some equipment. Yeah. Okay. Because that's what the game is about, right? All right. Okay. Um, now, the SRD or the book gives us a set list of equipment that we can just automatically get, and it makes this this part of character creation very, very easy. We just want um, to do that, so, or do we need to be more Iron Man specific? No, we, we don't need to be too specific. Now, we have um, the first part of it. Uh, we have the option of either a weapon and shield or two martial weapons. Weapon and shield. We need a weapon and shield. So for now, just put weapon and shield. We need to replace weapon with our sword, though. Yeah. We'll, we'll get our sword stats here in a second, but weapon and shield. Uh, the next part, we can get either five javelins or any simple melee weapon. I think we should do the javelins, but make it different for him. Somehow. How about his jab? He'll still use javelins, but how about his javelins represent uh, a cannon that he's built onto his suit? Yeah, some, okay. yeah. <laughs> some kind of freaking predator. <laughs> Boom. It, it shoots out of a shoulder mounted cannon. Either on shoulder or like some. Sure. I like it. Let's do that. All right. So that would be his weapon. Okay. And we said, uh, Shoulder mount, or I mean, uh, oh wait, that's the secondary, like a, you said javelin. Um, yes, I have no he idea. gets, he gets five javelins. He's one javelin. Just, just wing it, it's fine. That's better, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got it. Oh, FF fans is in here. Hmm, What's up, good FF friends? Fans? Or she. Uh, I've learned not to be so gender sure. Anyway, javelins, and then we'll put in the uh, princes. Oh wait, times five. Uh, next, shoulder cannon, right? Mm-hmm. How do you? How do you spell shoulder? Well, I don't want to put all the letters. It's fine. Uh, this is just for the equipment. We don't need this right now. We'll worry about this part of it later. Don't even don't even bother. That's perfect. I love it. There you go. All right, and then sword, right? But we were going to make uh, it. Right. We're not to the sword yet. We will be soon. We will be soon. All right, well. Okay. Um, next, we get either a priest's pack or an explorer's pack. I think our Tony Stark character is an explorer of sorts. Indeed. Okay, so let's give him that. Okay. Um, do you want to show people where you're typing this in? 
Uh, you yeah. don't have to. No, they need to okay. see at least where I'm at for now. Down here on the character sheet. And I seriously just typed in 5e character sheet fillable PDF. That's it. 5e. It. They have it on the uh, on the website, Wizards of the Coast website. Yeah, it was straight from them. I got it straight from them. Okay. Uh, so we got our Explorers pack now? No, we don't. I don't even know what it does. Does it have stuff in it? Or it does. It just is it? It does. It has stuff in it. And we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, next we get Chainmail and Holy Symbol. Now, we are getting Chainmail, but for us it's going to represent our armor. Let's not do Chainmail. Really. Yeah, well, that's what we get. This is default. Really? It really is. Then screw the default. This is one thing we're going to change. Okay. He gets, get, pl he gets we plate, plate armor. armor. We're giving plate armor then. Yep. Just the only way it makes sense. Okay. Well, we can explain it that his Mark I suit isn't great. Fine. Chainmail. All right. All right. What is um, the what is the plus on chainmail? We're well, going to do that at the top. Uh, that's. One of the next things that we do in character creation here. Okay, so now, now we know what weapons we're using, right? Well, we don't know what weapons, we know that we get a weapon. So now you're going to go to your uh, system resource document and get, um, go to the section that describes equipment. Okay. Or you get it from the book. Do, do, do. So yeah, we just need to find out. Okay. The, uh, so chainmails. So you want to find out the chainmail? Armor class. All right. For chainmail, it grants you a sixteen armor class. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go up to. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna go up to the armor class. Put sixteen. Sixteen. And that's my. But we also one. have a shield, don't we? Yes. So. Our shield grants us an additional two armor class. Okay, what type of shield? It's just generically it's just shield. It's called shield. That's it. I like to do this. And that is that what you did right there is actually pretty important because um, you won't always use your shield. Sometimes you'll put it away. Use, you'll put it away and use a two-handed weapon. So this actually changes this to eighteen. Okay. Um, now, do we know that Dex modifier throws in here? Or is that fourth? For our guy. No, we're not, we're, we're not worried about that. Okay. Now we need a weapon, don't we? Yes. Okay. Um, now, we, because of the way that we're doing this, we can... Half-orc wizard. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're doing uh, Tony Stark, and we named him Theodore Starkinson. So we're, mm. we're literally creating a, a, a mech character. We're creating Iron Man in D&D right now. That's what we're doing. Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> um, so our Tony Stark character, he gets a weapon now, right? Yeah. Um, and we get to, because of our um, class, we can create a, or we get to pick a weapon from any, any one weapon on the list. Okay. Okay. So we have battle axe, flail, glaive, great axe, great sword, halberd, lance, longsword, maul, morningstar, pike, rapier, scimitar, short sword, trident, war pick, war hammer, and whip. A so lot of options. So what a lot we, of options. What have we seen in the movies, or possibly your comic book knowledge, mm -hmm. that he has ever done a uh, short range that was really impressive? Punches the shit out of him. Just punch? So is he going unarmed? Well, <laughs> no. Because what we can do is we can choose for our Tony Stark character to get the uh, flail. We can use a flail or a morning star. And what that's going to represent is us building a punching gauntlet for our armor 
because it's bludgeoning damage, right? And we're just punching, and it's just like a big spike, spike ball. big spike ball right at the end of his armor. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna go Morning Star. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. The Morning Star is uh, actually a piercing weapon, but that's okay. That's fine. Really? It is. It is. How? Because it has spikes on it. Remember, we're using the spiked gauntlet. Okay. Yeah. But if we want to do bludgeoning damage instead, we can do that. Um, you can there, choose? Well, we get to choose any one weapon. So if we don't want to do piercing uh, yeah, damage... Yeah, let's not do piercing. Okay, sure. Um, so for bludgeoning, we have the option of a flail. Okay. Which is the same amount of damage as the Morning Star, but it's bludgeoning instead of piercing. Down. That's right. It's 1d8. One D eight bludgeoning. Now, bludgeoning. Uh, that actually, I always shorthand bludgeoning to, to that. To blood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's here's something that is brand new to fifth edition that is very important to know is your proficiency modifier. Everything you have revolves around your proficiency modifier. Now. If you are looking at the system resource document or the... Oh, um, i got to put it in here too, don't I? Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute, because we don't have all the information we need for this yet. What? Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't. Okay. Uh, we need our proficiency modifier. Now, if you're using either the system resource document or uh, the book, there is a table that gives you your proficiency bonus. I wish we could show that. That's cool. Yeah. I should have had you send it to me. Um, at level one and up to level four, your proficiency bonus is going to be two. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in here. Plus two. Now, you have played enough that you can explain what those proficiency bonuses apply to. Uh, a little bit. Okay. I know it applies to your damage and your hit roll. Not your damage. Only the hit roll? The attack roll, yes. Or the attack roll, not the yes. hit roll, the attack roll. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, I know it just applies to um, your uh, sub skills or whatever, right? Do you remember which ones? The ones that you're proficient there in. There you go. The wisdom and charisma. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think the next step, we now that we have that, I think we can start applying our bonuses to our saving throws and spells. Let's get those filled in now. Okay. Uh, so this one would be. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, so this would still be. Do you just do the pluses? I honestly don't remember. Um. So you don't have to put plus because we know that it's a plus. The only time I actually ever put anything other than just the the number is if I have a negative score. I always do. I don't know. It's just me. Okay. You're allowed uh, to. So it's like one mm -hmm. there. Yeah, because. You're drawing the number for that bonus from the score. Okay. And all you're doing right now is you're filling in what the bonus is that you get for from each. Here. Yeah. For, okay. Great. Now these two are a little bit different because you have uh -huh. proficiency in them. Because we have proficiency. Yep. So uh, for these, so it'd be it would be zero, but it gets how much to it? I'm gonna um, add into it. Because you're proficient with it, you get to add your proficiency bonus to it. So it'd be two. That's right. This one so if our four. yeah, because we have a two bonus from our charisma, and then we get to add our proficiency bonus to that on top. That's of only it. for savings throws. And there'll be times when you're playing. Dungeons and Dragons, where you have to specifically do a savings throw. Mm -hmm. Like, you walk into some aura or some trap happens, mm -hmm. and the DM's instantly like, all right, give me a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. And does he does he have to tell you what you what you need to get to pass? How does that okay. work? I forget. I, it could just be... Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Okay. It depends on the spell. I was wondering if it was specific to the spells. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway. And now, this is, this is a, a good tip for DMs, too is um, generally speaking you want your players to succeed or fail a little you want them to succeed about 60 to 70 percent of the time 
You okay. want them to. So I guess that gives them some oh we can make it. <laughs> yeah, you want to give them a little bit of hope that you can yeah, some hope <laughs> that you can later you can get to away. the end. Yeah. Um so because we know uh, let's pull up our let's pull up our machine again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's say uh, we want our paladin to succeed on a strength saving throw about 60% of the time. Now, based on a d20 roll, a d20 roll has an average of 11, and our strength score is plus one. Okay. So, as a DM, if I want the players to averagely be able to beat that, then they would have to roll an 11 or 12. Right. Does that make sense where uh -huh. I'm, yeah, where yeah. I'm getting these numbers from? Because mm -hmm. as a player, you're going to roll a d20, and then you're going to add your strength score to it. So okay. um, if, I want, if I want the players to have a good chance to make that roll, I'll tell the players, okay, make a save of 11. And then you, you roll and you add the number to it. I guess what I was asking mm -hmm. was, I thought uh, the roll had, was based off like the actual specific spell. It is. Okay. But this is one of those things as a DM, you got to improvise a lot. I see. Right. Okay. Um, let's move on to our skills now. All right. Oh, what is this? Has this been... I don't even know what this is. What, what is Inspiration. Um, we'll get to that here in a little bit. And then that guy? Initiative is based on our dexterity. Oh, yeah. Bonus. Which is zero. We have zero. <laughs> Something you should be used to now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we could quickly go over this and just, since we're up here. Um, okay. Yeah, we can talk about this. So, um, these are used primarily by the DM. And what this is going to do is give the DM tools that he can use um, in making stories for the characters. Um, the personality traits are going to be, um, there's a list of them in the books, but generally it's going to be your character's outlook on his basic temperament sort of things. Our basic. Him. <laughs> I can't spell. That's okay. Uh, ideas and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, your ideals are going to be uh, sort of things like uh, you want your character to... This is our Tony Stark character. So his ideals will be, um, you know... Finding, uh, improving his armor is the only way that he knows how to become strong enough to yeah, deal with overcome the these, right? right? So through technology comes victory, <clears throat> is, would be an ideal that we could have. All right. Now, the DM will be able to use this because he can, um, he can come to the players in-game and offer challenges in such a way that the uh, the Tony Stark character would want to follow a lead that would give him better technology for a suit. Okay. Um, your bonds are going to be things like uh, certain characters that you're bonded with or certain NPCs. Um, flaws is pretty easy for our Tony, Tony Stark character. He's displaced. relations mm -hmm. with other players or NPCs. Okay. Um, our flaws are going to be pretty easy for this Tony Stark character. He's an alcoholic. alcoholic. Tony Stark's an alcoholic and that's how he deals with stress. That's okay. what he does. What's okay. his other flaw? Good point. enough. He's an ass. Ego. Ego. There we go. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you want to do next? Oh, you're pretty... Zero. Um, let's go over our skills. Uh, our skills we're going to fill out the same way we do saving throws. Oh, I forgot to do this. You want to do that next? Okay. Yeah. Now, normally it is a flail. Oh, yeah. But this fist. is our power fist. Okay. Just call it a power fist. Okay. Now, <laughs> the attack bonus for a melee weapon is your strength bonus plus your proficiency bonus. No matter what? No matter what. So the weapons don't have their own damage now? It's they have their the own D. damage, but it's this the, is our the dice, their attack it? roll. That's right. This is the attack That's roll. The, okay. So it's, so it's strength is with plus one. Plus one. And then our, and our proficiency, proficiency is two. Is two. So it's a plus three. Plus three. Okay. So a plus three to hit. Okay. And then the damage on our flail, we don't have to put to hit. We know it's to hit. Because okay. it's our attack bonus. Oh, right. Um, the damage is our 1D, weapon damage. 1d what? 6? 1d8. 1d8. Plus our strength modifier. Just strength? Just strength modifier. Plus 1. Okay. So that means when we roll to hit an enemy, we roll a d20. Yep. And if we hit, if the attack is successful... The DM will let you know if you hit. And if the attack is successful, we roll a d8 and add 1 to the result. Okay. Okay. So, in other words, we take one of these brown guys like this, roll yep. it. Roll the one. Um, <laughs> well, well, <clears throat> oh, they can't see it. That's a 20. Yeah, that, we rolled a 20. We rolled a 20. Hot damn. That we was hit. amazing. We hit. Hot damn. All right, we hit that time. Okay. Um... And then when we do hit, we roll a d8, and whatever the result of the d8 is, we add one. So yeah. if we roll an eight, we deal nine damage to them. Oh, we didn't say um, whatever you roll, you add three to it because of this. Oops, no, go back. Yes, that's right. So yeah, whatever uh, your dice roll shows up, you add this. So in other words, if we were to attack a clone of ourself, for us to be able to hit an 18 armor class with a plus three bonus. We'd have to roll a 15. Yes, we'd have to roll at least a 15. It's pretty and tough. Get, and get the plus 3. It's pretty tough. It's and not an easy thing to do. We would hit ourselves, yes. It's not an easy thing And to there's do. other spells that increase your, uh, you know, to hit. That's right. And everything. Making it easier. All right. Um, I need to put shield up here or not? Uh, we don't need our shield there, but we do need our javelins. Hmm. Okay, and we called them cannon. Yes. Our javelins are our cannon. And I know what I'll do here. Oops. I'm out of space. Out of space? Mm, I was going to number them just so we could connect them down here. Can't believe it. Okay. Um, the javelin, uh, we can just put cannon. Cannon's fine. One power fist. Oh, you're numbering your attacks. Yeah, well, here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That okay. way we can uh, sure, link sure, sure. Oh, no, that's great. I love that. Um, okay, so our javelin is a thrown weapon. Okay, how do we put that? Uh, well, we'll we'll do that part of in a second. Throw. Um. So yeah. Uh, now the Modifier for thrown is your dexterity score, or your dexterity modifier. So mm. we know that our dexterity modifier is zero. Yep, dex is But we zero. still get a plus two bonus for being proficient, proficient with the javelins. Okay. Okay. Um, the damage on the javelins is 1d6. Okay. And... Plus strength. Uh, uh, no. Oh, it's plus dex on these, isn't it? No. We don't get any of those on, on this. What? Yeah. yeah. Bull crap, Ola. Wouldn't be strength throwing that javelin? Uh, no. no. Okay. All right. Fine. Fine. Um, okay, so now we have our our weapons. Yeah, now we can kill things. Yeah. All right, now there's another part that 5th edition introduced. Oh, crap. i got to fill in all this. That's fairly important, and that is backgrounds. Yeah. 
I gotta fill in all these. Okay, uh, you fill in those, and I'll start talking about the character backgrounds. Now, do you just do the pluses over here? Um, in the ones that you are not proficient with, yes, you will just do pluses. Um, so no, I meant like you do all of them. Don't you? What? So this one's acrobatics, which is dexterity, and I get a plus zero. So I put a zero in there. That's correct. All right, for this specifically, I'm not going to do pluses. You don't have to. Nobody's, nobody's going to make you do that. Wisdom. Another zero. Why did it skip two? Intelligence. One. Athletics. One. Now, the reason I know what I'm doing here is I'm literally just transcribing from these big pluses over here. Mm -hmm. With like strength plus one, bam. That's right. Charisma, two. Intelligence, one. Wisdom, zero. Now this one I'm proficient in, so I get my charisma, which is two, plus I get an additional two because I'm proficient up here. So this would be four. Intelligence, one. Wisdom, zero. Now I'd like to talk about the backgrounds because every every character gets a background. Now the backgrounds out of the book and in the system resource document are fairly generic. In fact, they're all very, very generic, but I think they're done like that very intentionally. Um, whatever your character's background is, in general, they will all grant you two proficiencies in a skill, and then some sort of tool proficiency as well as the equipment for that tool proficiency. All right. Okay. So um, we are going to uh, use an example here of being a folk hero. Okay. Now the folk hero, because we are playing a superhero, um, the folk hero background by default gives us animal handling and survival as our two skill proficiencies. So these are in addition to the proficiencies we, we get from our class. Yes. Which ones were they? Um, this is by default animal Action. handling and survival. Now um, what we're going to do, we're going to talk to our DM and our DM is going to okay us not using anim animal handling. We can get something else if we choose to. Okay. Um, and instead of animal handling, we're going to get uh, athletics because that's going to represent us building our suit in such a way that... What would you do just then? I put proficiency in mm -hmm. athletics. Okay. And added plus two because of our plus two. Okay, great. Um, and then the other skill we get a proficiency in is survival. Probably in the S's. Okay. Plus two. And okay. That. Okay. Um, next, we get tool proficiencies. We get one type of artisan tools, and we get uh, vehicle land proficiency. Where do we put that? At? Um, so we have a box that says other proficiencies and languages. Yeah, down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we get a type of artisan tool. So uh, let's be a blacksmith. So we get blacksmith tools. That's how we improve on yeah, our... Yeah, that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and we can put in, in uh, quotes next to that uh, with proficiency or proficient. What does that mean? What do you mean? Um, so if the DM asks us to uh, use a role that relies on our blacksmith's tools, we are proficient with them. So it just says proficient in? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm already doing this other, under proficiency. Okay. okay, and that's fine. All right. Um, so then we also get um, some equipment with this background as well. Okay. Um, in this background, we get the set of uh, artisan tools that we choose. We also get a shovel, an iron pot, 
a set of common clothes, and a belt pouch containing tin gold. So I'm not worried about all that. Okay, great. I think they could just look that up if they need to know what's in the blacksmith's store. Absolutely can. Um, now we only have a couple more spots that we need to fill in now. Um, we need to fill in our perception. Oh, perception. Mm -hmm. It's all the way underneath our skills. Passive wisdom perception? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Two? Two. I don't even know what that applies to. How does this work? Um, so the the DM will occasionally ask you to say, give me a perception check. Right. But sometimes he won't. Sometimes he will determine behind the screen whether or not you're able to see something. Just based off your equipment and your all your pluses this and This is minuses. where this number here comes from, your passive perception. So he would already know that number, our DM. Right. Like you already, you probably keep tabs on that. I do. Like, I actually have a sheet that has everybody's right. stats on it. All right. That way I know if you guys are cheating. <laughs> but if I look at my perception over here, mm -hmm. it is two. also two. What Yay! Do you know? What about that? Um, so now we have all of the uh, character information input on this character. Okay. Um, now the only thing besides what we have here that we would have to keep in mind is that when we're moving around doing stuff in game, instead of saying, I swing my flail at the bad guy and hit him. Well, instead, because we're not hitting them with the flail, we're hitting them with the power fist. So mm -hmm. you're going to haul off with your power fist and punch them. Yep. So now our character is, is complete at level I one. I mean, it really is. Um, there's some cosmetic things that you can add on the back. And background. Uh huh. We haven't even done a background yet. Well, this is our background. But we're kind of... Hero. Right. He's, Our background is we already know here. this guy, basically. Well, no, that those extra proficiencies that we got mm -hmm. came from our our background. So our background is literally <clears throat> hero. What do you mean extra proficiencies? Oh, oh, when you yes. added the extra two. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Ah, ah, I see what you're doing now. Yes. I see what you're doing. So now we're all set up. Gosh, let's fight something. <laughs> <laughs> let's let me fight today. something. Come on. Okay. Are we uh, ready to fight? We can do it. I'll roll some dice okay. here. Let's see some dice again. Okay, let's see some dice. Nice. Guy. So we're going to do a bit of theater of the mind stuff right now. All right, here we go. Okay, so our Tony Stark character just finished putting together his suit of armor, and he is taking it for a test spin. Yep, he yep. found some some local... Uh, local <laughs> Uh, yeah. mercenaries that are willing to help him out. Mercenaries that want to fight. Yes. Uh, the mercenary is standing <laughs> directly in front of him, and he is ready to fight. All right, let's roll. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is roll initiative. Yeah. So, DM rolls for the other guy. I roll for me. Okay, so... I got an 11. Wait, plus... Oh, you get to add stuff. Oh, no. My no, dexterity. Don't get to add uh, let me show. Let me show them what I'm looking at. Right. Yep. See, just if I had any initiative, which was based off dexterity, I would have got to add to this roll. But I rolled exactly an eleven, so that's what I get. Bummer. Initiative just means what order you take to make your actions. That's right. Like if there's ten people, you would go exactly in the order of the numbers they get. That's right. Okay. So. Um, our armor makes us sluggish, and because of that, uh, the local hired mercenary is going to get to act in this uh, test combat before our suit of armored hero. All right, so okay, that's the logic behind the right. rules. Um, now he's a he's a simple mercenary. He's not terribly skilled, okay. so he's only going to have a plus three bonus to his attacks. All right. It's fairly low. Right. Okay, so he's going to swing. Now, for him to hit this suit of armor on a plus three, he has to roll a 15. Um, so, he rolled a nine plus, plus his three. plus three, and he got a 12, which means his attack either hit, but it did not 
penetrate the suit, or mm -hmm. it completely missed. Whiffed. 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 Um, the... I may not have known all that. That's the DM's role. Yes. That he just kind of explaining behind, how it works. That typically happens behind <laughs> the screen. Um, now that his turn is done, he's not going to take any more actions. Now it's the... All right. Now it's Tony Stark's turn. And I get to add... Let's see what I get to add to this. So what is what is Tony Stark doing on his turn against this mercenary? So I don't have any spells yet, right? You don't have any spells because you've right. not augmented your suit with any... Right, so I've just got my tools. punch and my javelin cannon guy. You do. You have a power so, fist and a, and a cannon that you can use. He just tried to swing on me. He's he in did. melee range. He is in melee range. All right, so we are going to use my power fist, which gives me okay. a plus three to my roll. Okay. All right, and then it is a... Well, I'll come back. All right, plus three to my roll. Okay. I rolled a 19. Okay. Plus three, I well, rolled a 22. Our, our mercenary is in leather armor, and he's not particularly de dexterous. Okay. So his armor is only a, a 14 anyway. Man, I so definitely hit him. You've landed a full-on punch with your power fist. All right, so now we know that I hit at least. Next, we need my mouse to continue to work. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and so then... So we've landed our hit. I roll a 1d8. 1d8. This guy. And I'm just going to add plus one to it. Alright. See, this is what I need when we're playing. I need a I need a camera that I can put over everybody's die rolls. <laughs> Especially, oh my god, rolling eight. Smokes. This guy is getting whooped up on. Yeah. Eight so plus one, eight, so I, I dealt you nine, nine damage. So you deal nine points of damage. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the damage dealt in Dungeons & Dragons typically is uh, sort of abstract. So just because your weapon has dealt nine points of damage, it doesn't necessarily mean that you full-on punch this dude in the head. It could represent that you swung at him, and he had to use every bit of strength in his body to avoid the attack to not get punched by your power fist. But that drew a lot of energy out of him to avoid that attack. Okay. Does that make sense? Kind of. To you. Kind of. What do you are you saying? Like he's a wizard, and or no? Uh, in other words, what I'm in other words, what I'm saying is, in in this circumstance, you hit him with a uh, a blunt object. Okay. However, if you were using a sword and you made full contact with somebody with a sword, you'd cut their limbs off, okay. or you'd slice into them. Right. Right. But in D and D, your character can take several hits before they're no longer able to continue fighting. Oh, and as, as far as like lobbing limbs off and stuff like that, that's totally up to the DM. I don't think D&D's actually put that in uh, yet. There's no, there are some alternative rules in the back. Right. Um, and it is something that I will use, but we haven't had to worry about it yet. Right, probably give them like a disadvantage or something. Uh, for, for some time, yes. Um, clerics can regrow limbs though. Right, that is pretty crazy. Yeah. Magic! Magic! PFM. Mm. Pure magic. That's okay. right. Okay, so our uh, our mercenary has taken nine points of damage, and he is looking <gasps> pretty rough. Uh, it is now his turn. <clears throat> yep, he's swinging on me. Swinging on you. But before he does, he's going to back up. Uh, he is going to disengage from you and throw a javelin at you. Oh! He rolled another nine, and again, he's not particularly dexterous. So it right went, past where right past your head. Hey, <laughs> you suck, man! All right, I'm rolling on him. Now, since he's that far away from me, I'm also going to. You're gonna fire off your cannon. I'm gonna fire off the cannon. So okay. let's look at the cannon stats real quick. Cannon stats. You get a plus two to my roll, and then mm -hmm. it's a one d six. Right. All right. Let's do it. Plus two to the right. Thirteen plus two. I got fifteen. Fifteen. Does that hit Mr. Leather Armor? It does. Armor? It sure does. Woo! It's Leather Armor. So now roll a one six and I add one. If only you could roll like this on Tuesday. I know. I roll pretty bad. 
No, I don't get any additions. No, just a 1d6. Okay. So here we go. Hit him pretty for good, two. Pretty good. <laughs> so now... I caught him in the leg. You did. So now you've dealt him 11 points of damage, which is enough to completely crumple him to the ground. <laughs> mercenary um, down. Mercenary down. Um, so that's typically what it would look like, a, a regular combat. That's how the normal flow of it. And that's without any amazing spells or anything. Yeah, that was just some physical yeah, just, a little just swings. Physical stuff. Easy stuff. Um, how many experience points did I get? You get three. Three experience points. Let's see, I don't like this deal anymore. <laughs> how much did my first level up? Um, 2,000, right? 7,950. No, I think it was 2,000. You get three experience at a time. I think it was 2,000. <laughs> Man, my first experience for, for playing D&D, &D, we went exactly by the book. And as, as much as I love it, it was just, it took forever to level just to level one. Well, we started at zero. Mm. But like the original sure, rules, sure. you start at zero sure. and you work your way to one. Zero on characters, yeah. 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 Some people play like that. That's the yeah. way some people play all the time. Took us forever, like six months. That's right. To get to level one. It, sometimes it does. <laughs> it was rough. Um, you know, I mean, yes, but also, it doesn't seem like it. But think about the last time we leveled in our game. Right. It has, it has been a while. It has been. It's been a while. I also want to talk so about much, that game. There's so much going on that you don't really realize yeah. that it's been so long since you leveled up. Yeah, for real. Yeah. You know, so you say you want to talk about it. Well, I wanted to, okay. but people don't even get to see it. It's unfortunate because some of my some of our players in the group, mm -hmm. they um, they don't care to have their face and stuff on screen. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Uh, yeah. So I tried streaming it one time, one night, mm -hmm. and it just I don't know. It seemed weird. I was the only person y'all could see, even though you could hear everybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But we're thinking about starting another group. I'd be down for that. I can. And you'll get to play. You I would, have to I would love to be a player. Yeah, yeah you'll get to play. To play game. And I've got some other people online. So this one would be more of like mm -hmm. actual people on Discord. Sure. And then we'd show everything online. Even the battlefield. So everything. you say you want to talk about our Tuesday game. Well, people don't mm -hmm. get to see it. So yeah. I, don't want to, I don't want them to be like, damn it, I wish I could saw that. Well. Or darn it. Darn it. Yeah, you can't say damn it. It's uh, okay. 18 and lower. Okay. I mean, okay, so. PG 13 movies say damn it. I know. My paladin, uh. So, <coughs> we're still trying to get to my brother, my half demon brother, who is. Do you feel like you're getting close? Oh, yeah, we're very close. So, I've been collecting. So, these he's imprisoned these people for hundreds of years in a state of where they're still alive. To what people are you referring to? Okay, he's imprisoned my stepmom which is a full demon, and this half-demon was able to imprison her. Yeah. So he's very, very strong. Pretty strong. And I didn't even like her because she's the one that made this guy. But she was in prison, so she's even helping me out to try to kill him. She said, if you promise to kill him, I'll help you. And I said, okay. And she pulls this, like, essence, this gem from her chest, and she's like, with her last breath, she just holds it out. And as I took it, she just faded to dust, and uh, so I got that rune from her. I got another rune from, uh, oh, my God. I know I got one from my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, oh, man, it was so terrible. There was, like, this stage of uh, this, like, little little thing carrying out, and it was. Marionette puppets. Uh, marionette puppets were carrying out. And the, the puppet, what was the puppet show? It was, yeah, it was the destruction of his kingdom and how. This demon lord, uh, this demon brother of mine, took over, and now his rule is starting to spread across the entire lands. And he was he was imprisoned to forever watch this yes. puppet show on repeat. He was just sitting in a throne like seat, and but he was just stuck. He, he was, was just stuck, and all he could do was move his eyes. Yeah, and he was just had to see it for like three hundred years or whatever, two or three hundred years. That was terrible. But anyway, he had the or no, he had the third gem. I forgot who the second one came from. Who did the second one come from? It was um, my stepmom, my dad. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Because it, it was four gems. Yes. 
Who was the second one? Do you remember? Yes. Well, tell me! <laughs> it was the second I, one. I was going to see if you, it was... I uh, don't remember. The, the hand. Uh, your, your, oh, the well, guy... I'm that, using hand, but it was his primary advisor. Right. The the king's second-hand man, mm -hmm. first-hand man, or whatever, yeah. the right-hand man. Mm -hmm. So he handed me one of the gems, which was his and essence. He was trapped there as, as sort of a punishment for encouraging your your dad to marry the demon woman. And he, he made the, that decision because, this is what he told you, he made the decision because the woman uh, had land, right. armies, and wealth. And so the advisor said that it was a strong political move. I see. And then this was so his, That was his punishment for it. His okay. punishment. This demon guy is so terrible. Pretty and terrible. then yeah. the last and final one, my father, we were able to chat with him enough for him to give me yes and no answers with, yes and no answers with his eyes. Mm. And, uh, and and each time that you got a gem from somebody. Uh, oh, I felt their life essence kind of drain away. Drain away and into these gems, which mm -hmm. I've been collecting. Yes. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of strange. I gotta be honest for a paladin. It's a little weird holding these soul gem like things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I don't know how to feel about it. But anyway, I was like, is the is the fourth and final gem nearby? And my father was like, yes, with his eyes up and down. And so how did we figure out it was inside me? I think he just looked at me with like this like stare. And I was yeah, anyway. And uh, we even went and chopped up the marionette thing that was of me. And you found one. And we found one inside of it. We tried to use it, and it didn't work. And we were like, oh, the last and final one is actually inside me. And I was like, somebody else do it for me. And uh, they tried, and it was like their arm blasted back they could, or something like that. They, they tried to dig into my chest, and they're like, couldn't do it or something. Well, it wasn't necessarily that. Oh. Um, I just remember they couldn't do it. Right. I had to do it myself. It felt like just pushing into... To, it felt like pushing steel. into a person. Right. So they couldn't actually do it. Right. When I did it, it was like I was going into some other... Yeah, you started pushing it. Yeah, I don't even and know. You just, it, was it, it was like your hand was moving through jello. Yeah. And you could feel your hand <laughs> sink into your own chest. It was crazy. But anyway, I got the fourth and final G. From yourself. Yeah, from myself. And then after you pulled it out... Yeah. Before you put it into the hilt of this sword that you've been building, you could feel your own life essence drain away. Yeah. It was really weird. But then once you once you empowered the sword, it all came back. And your life essence really was energized. Yeah. And then a blade came from the hilt all by itself. Blowing hilt. Like a damn lightsaber. Yeah, like, kind of like a lightsaber, yeah. <laughs> so now, now you have... Oh, man. Um, so, the story that you told, it, yeah. it took place, uh, I mean, you told the story in about a minute and a half. Yeah, I know, I tried. But, and you did. Um, mm -hmm. But really, start to finish of you acquiring the hilt and making it to the point where you are, you guys have been, we've had several game sessions. We've even leveled up. You've even leveled up during this quest. Yeah. Um... So this quest has been, in real lifetime, we've been playing, we play on Tuesdays, uh, and we've been playing for about, I'd say, three-ish months, mm -hmm. do, all doing the same quest. I know. It's pretty Traveling crazy. to your homeland, entering your kingdom, destroying the... Cigarettes. Or whatever. That was part of it, yes. And then making it to an image of your half brother, right? Thinking that you were able to destroy him, destroyed that image. And then we, but then it plunged. And you. then we plunged into some for like a two minute fall yeah. through darkness yeah, and like cool blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you made it, and and you've been inside of this sort of thing. Demon dimension. Yeah, like living dimension mm. thing. Uh, for about three months. Like this whole story is being stretched out. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty terrible place. Reminds really, me of the Path of Exile. Yeah, a little. 
if you play bad today. So. Um, but it's day. this place that you're at. It's, it's a really unfortunate place to be at. It's, yeah, it's not somewhere that you would choose to go on vacation or something. But um, yeah, that's character creation. That's what we wanted to go over tonight. Um, and we created Theodore Starkinson. Um, and we will uh, come. We'll revisit him. Yeah, we'll at come another back to time. Him. And when we do, we'll talk about what happens when you level up and how to do that. Yes. So, we, yeah, we could even level him up. We could do two or three levels just to mm -hmm. kind of show people sure can. the different things you can we do can as you level. Get, get him to as many levels as we want. Yeah, two or three. Get him up to four. Get him spells and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can do that next time. Yeah. I know the DM, so he says I can level up. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that's about it, guys. All right. I, th I think we covered some good stuff. So a lot of, a lot of ground. I yeah. mean, uh, we could even show them another character sometime. Mm -hmm. But we definitely got to go into feats with the levels up and all that. Sometimes. It'll be a level four, and that's completely optional. And up right. to the DM. What other, what other stuff can you do besides feats? I think you can just add it to your... Uh, mm -hmm. You can yeah. plus one one of your uh, strength decks, you know, kind of one of your... Uh, what are those called? Abilities. No, not abilities. Jesus. What are they called? Skills? Your ability scores? Is that what those are called? I don't even remember are. ability scores. <laughs> Noob alert. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first time that you and I sat down and, and created a character, um, you were kind of in the passenger seat for that. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this time you handled, you handled half of primarily it. most of it yourself. Most of it. Um, after after having played, do you? No, I'm saying when we were doing it. Oh, sure. Um, after having done it, after having played, and then going through character creation now, do you feel more confident about it? Yes, actually. So if somebody came to you, I would be able. You to would help. be able to help them all the way through. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so you know, one one piece of advice that I have What's for. That? I forgot about that one. Oh, so this is something that's going to be given by your DM. Ooh, we forgot to do this one. Let me show you guys. What is it? How do you do this one again? Uh, so that's something that's going to be uh, given by your DM. Yeah, I don't... What do you mean? Um, oh, like we were doing inspiration dice yes, and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Is that a new thing to 5e or something? Um, no. Okay. It's in 4th edition. But people that play 3.5 will think that it's new to 5th edition. It's not right, real. right. So it's full with another. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And just a quick brief overhead of that one. How does that go? So I can just do it maybe. Oh, uh, so you get a certain number of them per game session. I believe it's one or two. I don't uh, remember. And in, the way we do inspiration die is just uh, it's you a one d four, right? And you can add it to literally anything. Mm -hmm. You want extra damage? You add it to your damage roll. Uh, yes, that's, you want that's the default, but you know, sometimes my players show up early for games, and I say, hey, great, it's early, and we, we can get started. Everybody gets inspiration for every roll for the night. Oh, I remember Some, that. Yeah, yeah we we did. that was a fun session. That was a heck of a yeah, session. People, people love that. We were actually hitting every yeah, time. Everybody was hitting stuff and <laughs> doing some damage. Even too, with the matter. Even rolling a four, yeah, we were getting it done. Yeah, you guys were beasting it. Oh, man. Um, but my, my advice <clears throat> to anybody, whether you're new to the game or you're experienced, yeah. even if you are an experienced player, still follow along with the character creation steps from the books. Yeah, and I say that because uh, every time there's a new edition, there's some rules that are slightly different from before. Uh, the, the one of the biggest changes in fifth edition is the proficiency bonus, mm -hmm. and without that proficiency bonus, a lot of the other things don't make sense, and you have to understand where your numbers are coming from. Right. So it's a good thing to to know all these things. Um, follow along step-by-step -step character creation, whether you're experienced or brand new. Um, sometimes there will be certain things, certain terminologies that you don't quite understand. And you might not understand why you're putting the numbers in, mm -hmm. where you put them in. And that's okay. Jam them in and figure it out later. Definitely. Just kind of... Just go with it. Mm -hmm. You'll figure just it out. Just go with it. It's not that big yeah. of a deal. It's, really it's just a game. <laughs> and you're trying to just make it more fun. 
That's right. And I'm sure nobody has a problem with a few house rules here and there. As long as everybody's in agreement. I, I don't like house rules. I hate them. Well, you know what I mean. You do it all the I time. Never, I never use the house rules. He does it all. All right, guys. It's been good. That's episode two for all character right. creation. Thank you, Opie, yet again. This right. is his humble home. I'm Cape Judge, and this is Opie. I'm Cape Judge, and this is Opie. <laughs> we'll catch you guys later. <laughs> it's been a good one. All right. Peace.